Hey what's up everyone, it's been a while since I've been able to make a video but I'm glad to be back and today I wanted to do a quick review of the Lenovo Legion Go. So if you guys are ready, let's get straight into it. And before we get started here, if you aren't subscribed to the channel yet, definitely make sure to smash that subscribe button and also leave a like for the algorithm, help this video get seen by more people. So starting off with some of the most important information that you need to know about this device. When this was launched, you really only had two options and you could get either the 512 gigabyte SSD for 650 or the one terabyte version for 700. So in my case, I'm going to be looking at the one terabyte model. Fortunately, the performance for both of them is going to be exactly the same. So you really don't have any performance differences between the two. But I would, of course, recommend that you go with the larger storage model since video games these days are getting larger and larger. And yeah, basically $50 more you double your storage, I think it's kind of a no-brainer. But with that being said, both models come with the AMD Z1 Extreme, which is basically a modified 7840U with 16 gigabytes of RAM. You also get that really nice 8.8 inch display with 2560 by 1600, 144 hertz display. So it's definitely a very nice. It's also a uh, display capable of getting up to 500 nits of brightness, and it has a 49.2 watt hour battery. The last spec that you should be aware of is that this is, of course, a Windows 11 handheld. So depending on who you are, this could be a positive or it could be a negative. I know a lot of people really enjoy SteamOS on the Steam Deck for its really consoleized type experience. And of course, Windows, you're not exactly going to have that type of experience. But one of the things that is really nice about the Legion and Go and having Windows on your handheld is that you really don't need to worry so much about compatibility. So that's definitely one of the major features and it can, in a lot of ways, make up for that lack of polish. Especially if you want to play competitive online games like Call of Duty, Windows is basically your only option. But starting off with what you get in the box, you of course get your Lenovo Legion Go. You get a hard shell carrying case, which is a very nice, this little puck thing, which can turn your right controller into a sort of mouse, and you also get a 65 watt charging brick. So overall, pretty nice as far as accessories. At least you get a charger. For portability, the Legion Go is roughly the same size as the Steam Deck. It's just a little bit taller, but it's pretty much the same width, especially considering that the Legion Go has a 1.8 inch larger screen than the original Steam Deck. So the original Steam Deck is seven inches, Legion Go is 8.8. .8, so you get a huge bump in terms of screen real estate for not that much more in terms of pocketability and carryability. So your games are definitely gonna look quite a bit nicer and pop a bit more on the high resolution and high refresh rate display of the Go. Now that we have major specs out of the way, what is using this device actually like? Especially as somebody who's been using the Steam Deck pretty much since launch. Well, overall, I'd have to say that the experience is generally pretty great. Being able to play pretty much whatever game that you want without having to worry about compatibility is a great feature, but there's definitely a couple of issues that I have run into. Namely, some games like Far Cry 5 in particular through the Ubisoft Connect launcher, it's a pretty awful experience if you play with a controller. You're gonna need to jump through a couple of hoops to actually get it running. So in my case, I actually had to add it to Steam as a non-Steam game and then enable Steam input through through the more settings and preferences on Steam. But this is just a general feature of Windows, and if you're a PC guy, I'm sure that you're very well acquainted with having to do some of these modifications and other things like that to get stuff running the way that you think that it should. And you know, that basically comes with playing around with settings, playing around with drivers, you know, doing other types of quick fixes and downloading pieces of software, looking things up online. There's just a lot that goes into it on Windows. And a lot of people I know are going to want to just have a device that they turn on and start playing without having to worry about changing settings or using workarounds. Though the Steam Deck certainly can be a device where you do need to do a lot of tweaks, it's also a device which has a verification system for determining what games are going to just work straight out of the box and which games won't work. And on the Legion Go, you really don't have that. So you pretty much just have to experiment and sometimes you'll be a little bit disappointed that a game that you wanted to play just doesn't really have the type of experience that you might have hoped for. And this brings me to another feature of the Legion Go, which is a real pain point. And that's the fact that the display is a native portrait display. 
Though it doesn't really sound like a problem on paper, if you are a tinkerer and you want to use AMD's frame gen tools to boost your FPS in non-competitive games, since I know that it does increase lag, the only way that I've really found to make this work on the Legion Go is by changing the screen orientation from landscape to portrait, since AMD software only seems to work on the native orientation of the panel. And this is something that I can make a video on later, uh, if you guys want, is using the uh, AMD Radeon software to get frame gen. So we'll just play with the quarry really quickly. And now we're going to go into the quarry here and you'll see that I have frame gen, uh, AMD fluid motion frames and the anti-lag on. Um, so that is pretty much the settings. And this works whether you launch it from here or if you launch it from your uh, launcher of choice like Steam. Um, so we'll just launch it here really quick. And the reason why it's not going to work this time is because I have my display set to landscape and that's not the native orientation for this display. The native orientation for this display is again portrait and because of that it's just not going to look appropriate. You're not going to be able to see it because it's super super tiny but basically in here it says frame lag not available, and that just means that the frame gen isn't actually working. So that is unfortunate because, you know, obviously you're going to want to play this in landscape mode, um, and frame gen doesn't work in landscape. So just to show you that it does work in portrait, if we go here to settings and then we go to display, you can go here and change it to portrait mode. So now we're in portrait. And so you see here, AMD fluid motion frames is active and we're getting a frame lag reading of 38 milliseconds and we're getting an FPS of 85 now. Our FPS is now sitting right at 40, 45, thereabouts. But like I said, it's like now it's in portrait mode and you're missing out on all of the screen real estate on the top and bottom. So this isn't really ideal. Very unfortunate that it doesn't work like this. And like I said, it's all down to Windows basically not working properly with a display that is not native landscape. So since this is a native portrait display, you're going to have some issues. And like I said, this is one of them, which is very unfortunate. I've also heard that it'll work with external monitors, but I haven't really had much success so far. And so that's kind of unfortunate. The Legion Go is also a relatively small battery device at just 49.2 watt hours. And in my opinion, it could have been a lot larger. If it were closer to 75 or 80 watt hours, I think that would be a lot nicer since playing more demanding games like Doom Eternal, Jedi Survivor, and Resident Evil 4, you're gonna be getting a little bit over an hour of gameplay. Maybe you could push it to like two hours if you're really lucky. But as I said, with a lot of these handhelds, you're just really not going to be able to get a lot of battery life, especially if you're playing some more demanding games and you're really wanting to have a nice visual experience. Also, I don't know who came up with the idea of putting speakers at the top of the device, but unfortunately, that's where the speakers are on this device, and they sound pretty mediocre at best. So that's a huge letdown in my opinion, especially considering that I think that they could have done what uh, Microsoft did with their Surface devices and just cut a little bit of a hole in the glass on both sides and made stereo front facing speakers. I mean, I know that it has the detachable controllers and all, but I feel like there could have been a way to do that. Regardless, finally for the negatives, I think that Lenovo's Legion Space is an R8 game launcher and it's a, an OK central hub for doing your gaming, but by default, they map the top left and right buttons of the controller to open their Legion Space functions, and I really don't know who thought this was a good idea, since literally every other controller out there maps these buttons to start and select. So as I had mentioned, when you get your Legion Go for the first time, the start and select buttons, uh, or at least that's what it would be normally on any other console, uh, are going to be defaulted to your Legion Go settings, and that's not really that great. So um, if you wanna have it set up where the start and select button that are normally mapped to start and select on the Legion Go function as the Legion buttons, uh, just do these simple steps. So we'll just go right in here to Legion Space, go Settings, and then you just want to go down here to Controller, and then scroll down a little bit more and 
you'll just want to toggle this on. So switch button layout, and you'll make sure that that is on the checked side. And but thankfully, the Go now allows you to remap them to start and select the way that it should have been from the start. And I haven't really heard a lot of people talk about this, so if you were worried about this before picking up Legion Go, don't be worried anymore. You can absolutely remap them now. It's super easy. Now, I know that I've been a little bit rough on this device so far, but I really want to give a complete look about how this device performs since there are other options out there but with that being said, this device stands out, I think, in a number of ways. And I feel that these are quite meaningful ways. So firstly, you can remove the controllers from the main tablet portion of the device, which is actually super helpful. If you want to play a game while you're lying in bed or something like that, or you just want to rest it somewhere and have a nice, comfortable gaming experience, it's really simple because you can just pop the controllers off, use the built-in kickstand and put this device wherever you want, and then just take off the controllers and have them resting at your side or wherever is most comfortable for you. And this is not something that can be said about the Steam Deck or really any other handheld on the market. The next thing for me is that this has two fully featured USB 4 ports, and I cannot tell you how much of a game changer this is. You can finally charge and use something like the Xreal Air at the exact same time without having to buy additional adapters or other types of things that may or may not work. This is probably one of my favorite features of the device. Finally, for game-changing features, you can use this in FPS mode, which basically allows you to map any of the buttons on the controller to any mouse and keyboard input to play pretty much whatever game that you want easily and have that nice mouse experience. Personally, I haven't really used it for FPS gaming, but I have actually used it for more casual games like Play Gank. And let me tell you, this is exactly how you want to experience a game like this on the go. I think this feature really does bring a lot to the table in terms of versatility, and I'd love to see more manufacturers take this idea and refine it further. Especially if you guys, like I said, are people who want to play those kinds of games that really just don't have good controller support or controller support in general. But we bring this back to the original question, which is between the Legion Go and something like the Steam Deck, which one's better for you? Well, I would say that if you value screen size, refresh rate, detachable controllers, and the ability to play online multiplayer games without worrying about anti-cheat stopping you from playing those games in the first place, then the Go is the obvious choice. If, however, you value a seamless integration with Steam, you have most of your games on Steam, and you want a more console-like experience with the caveat that sometimes games just simply don't work or they require significant tweaks to run, and you enjoy emulation, I'd say that the Steam Deck is absolutely the device for you. Also, if you are a fan of OLED and you don't care about having 144 hertz, but 90 hertz you think is a high enough refresh rate for you, then the Steam Deck OLED is absolutely the choice for you. In either case though, I think you'll be happy with your purchase, and since I have absolutely loved playing with both devices, I think either has their place in the mobile gaming space. But with that being said, which device do you have? And which one do you like more? Leave your thoughts and comments below. And if you haven't already, please remember to drop a like to the video and subscribe for more content. And I will see you guys in the next video. Later.